Today is our second week in this season of Lent, and we're talking about the power of the cross. The cross is, of course, central to our faith, but I think sometimes we struggle with the meaning. We're not really sure what the cross is all about. So over these weeks, we are talking about the cross. We're talking about why it matters. And you will grow to understand the meaning of the cross, not just intellectually, but you'll understand it in a way that will help your faith, help your faith grow, deepen. Last week, when we began our series, one of the things I wanted to make really clear is that there is not just one understanding of the cross. There are actually many understandings of the cross, and we're going to look at six over these weeks in Lent. We're looking at Jesus takes our place, Jesus sets us free, Jesus shows us how to live, Jesus restores our relationships, Jesus makes us clean, and Jesus gives us victory. The cross is more than a sign of God's love. It's a symbol. Now here's what the difference is. A sign has one clear meaning, right? Like a stop sign, very clear. A symbol, though, is multifaceted. I think of it kind of like a diamond. You can look at it from all different perspectives, and all of those perspectives come together to give it a richer meaning. I think that's how it is with the cross. When we understand these different perspectives, the cross becomes deeper and richer to us. In all of these ways, though, we learn that the cross is how God shares his love with us in Jesus. This is, I think, a really exciting topic for us to talk about the cross. I I say that because I think when we understand the cross more in our own life, our faith is able to take its next steps. So if you've been struggling with your faith, this is a great series for you because you're going to learn some things that are going to help you expand and deepen your faith. If you miss any of these weeks, I want to encourage you to catch up because it's really seeing all these meanings together that you'll understand the cross more fully. So we do have a weekly podcast and you can always catch us on YouTube and Facebook as well. Today, with week two, we're going to talk about how in the cross, Jesus sets us free. The theological name for this is the ransom theory of the atonement. Now, you don't need to remember that part. We will talk a little bit more about it later. But really just remember that when we talk about the second meaning today, we're talking about how Jesus sets us free. So let's hear our text. This is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 4. Luke 4, 16 through 21. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This text happens at the start of Jesus' ministry. He is at the synagogue teaching. He picks up this text of Isaiah, and he starts his ministry by talking about freedom. The text talks about that he comes to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, 
and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty the oppressed so that they might go free. This is where Jesus begins his ministry in this concept of freedom. And it's where he ends his ministry in the freedom that the cross gives us. Freedom, I think, is important regardless of the time in which we find ourselves. You know, we're talking each week not only about the theology of the cross, but we're talking about the culture of the times that gave birth to these various understandings. And this time was a time in the world where there was difficulty, where there was oppression. Jesus himself was part of the Jewish people who dealt with the oppression by the Romans. They were a people who yearned for freedom. They were looking for God to set them free. They dealt with a lack of freedom because of Roman rule, which resulted in taxation and violence and imprisonment. And so Jesus begins his ministry by talking about the freedom that he has come to bring. This understanding, Jesus sets us free, is an understanding many people have looked to throughout time especially those who were oppressed or imprisoned. I don't know if you're watching the PBS series, The Black Church, but it's really worth watching. The series talks about the coming of Christianity to an enslaved people in America and how the African-American population gave birth to the black church and how this idea of freedom was so central to their understanding of faith. Certainly in the Old Testament, we would have seen that in the story of Exodus, where an enslaved people were made free by God. And then in the New Testament, the story of Jesus and the freedom that he brought all people. In addition to this idea of freedom being attractive to the black church, other groups of people have looked toward this understanding of the cross for meaning and purpose. Liberation theology, which is a theology located in Latin America with Gustavo Gutierrez, is an understanding of the cross that looks at how the cross sets people free. This is an important focus, an enslaved people, oppressed people, people who are subjugated and held down have often looked to this meaning for purpose and understanding. One of the things that I think is most important in this understanding of the cross is that it's a holistic understanding. And what I mean by that is it's saying it's not just about saving your soul, but that your life matters too. John Wesley, who was the founder of what became the United Methodist Church, the denomination that we are part of, he was all about this. He worked tirelessly as a pastor to deal with the difficulties of his time, whether that's poverty or alcoholism or violence. He spent his time and energy there because he understood that the work of Jesus on the cross was not only to save our souls, but to redeem our lives and our bodies as well. Now, let me say a word about the name of this understanding, the ransom theory of atonement. This word ransom is important in helping us understand the fullness of what this concept is about. So, the idea here is that uh, people are held in bondage and that Jesus, through his death on the cross, sets them free. But who or what holds us captive that Jesus would need to sacrifice his life in order to free us? 
Well, depending on which ransom theology book you read, it would be the forces of evil, or the power of sin, or even the personification of the devil himself. What I think is important here is that we all struggle to be free. And we all notice that there are people and institutions and countries and situations where there is a lack of freedom and there is a yearning for more. Jesus sets us free because of ourselves, we cannot break free. We require a power beyond ourselves to meet us in our need. This applies not just to societal issues that hold people in bondage, but also personal ones as well. We can be enslaved by our addictions, by our temptations, by our guilt and our shame and our anxiety and our anger, and our past. Let's hear Pastor Michelle share a reflection from her own life. When I was in college, I was engaged to be married. Um, But three years into the relationship, he broke it off. And as relationships that are long-term... Nope, let me start one more time. When I was in college, I was engaged, and um, three years into our relationship, he broke it off. As happens with uh, long relationships that break, I was heartbroken. It was kind of a complicated reason, um, and it left me with doubts and questions about myself. I was resentful, and I was angry, so much so that for months afterward, other than my dad and my brother and a few male friends that I had, if you were a guy, I wanted nothing to do with you. If it was at all possible, I avoided interactions with men. And I got stuck in that place. And I began to notice and realize that it was affecting all of my relationships. I was not in a happy place, and I was stuck there. On a weekend home, I met with my pastor, and in one of our conversations, he had me read John 10.10, where Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I began to read that verse every day until one day I realized that Jesus' words were for me in the context of what I was facing. Jesus lived and died so that all people, including me, would have the fullness of life. It was a pivotal moment in that part of my life because it's when I began to let go of the hurt that I had been carrying around. I began to reconnect with people, and I began to be open to what God had for me next. I learned that in that period of anger, God had been right there with me, calling me to healing and hope. I just needed some help in remembering it and moving back into the freedom that we all have to experience a full and joy-filled life, the freedom that Jesus offers us through the cross. Most all of us at some time will know what it's like to be held enslaved or captive or oppressed, maybe not by the society around us, maybe by our own choices, the accidents of our life, or the difficulties that we face. So there is, for I think us all, a powerful meaning in this idea that we are made free by the cross. But I know um, this idea of what Jesus did on the cross 
could be one of your least favorite. And it might be one of your least favorite because of where we stand in the world today and how we look at things. So two problems with this idea that Jesus sets us free in this ransom theology of atonement. Two big problems are, first, this understanding is rooted in a dualistic worldview, meaning that there is God, all good, and then there is the devil, all bad, and that these two powers are fighting one another, and that Jesus' death on the cross is what gets people free but how is it that the devil had so much power on earth when this is God's creation? Second issue with this theory of atonement is that some people would look at this and say that this is just an opportunity for people to say, I, I don't know why it happened. You know, the devil made me do it. That it lacks the ability for people to have their own agency in life, to make their own choices. So, I know this atonement theory may not be for everybody, but I think there's some things here that are helpful and important for us regardless of how we come down on it. There is an importance to freedom, and I think all of us yearn for freedom. All of us are looking for a bigger and more beautiful life that Jesus and his cross can bring to us. Each week, as we talk about our topic, I am trying to look at in my study what the emotion is behind this understanding of the cross. And I do that because I think sometimes we may not connect to the theology, or we may find the scripture a little bit cumbersome. But I'm hoping that each week there's a feeling that you do connect with, that gives you some insight into this understanding of the cross. So when we think about Jesus setting us free, for me, the emotion behind that is one of joy. The joy that comes because we are free, because we have opportunity and choice, and possibilities. Today, we looked at the second meaning of the cross, that in the cross we hear that Jesus, he has come in the cross to set us free. And I think regardless of how we feel about the whole theology of this, we connect to the meaning of freedom both personally and what we want for all people societally. The cross has many meanings. It means Jesus takes our place and he sets us free, that he shows us how to live and he restores our relationships, that he makes us clean and that he gives us victory. So, let us journey together and find our meaning and purpose in the cross, because the cross changes everything. Let's pray. Loving and holy God, we give thanks that in you we find freedom that we are not held in chains to our past or to the limitations that others would put on us, that you call us to be a people working for justice, calling all people toward freedom and the life you would have for them. Today, as we reflect on this love that you have for us and how it invites us to be free. Help us to be the kind of people who not only embrace our own freedom, but work for the freedom of all. For all of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.